Well, in this video, we're going to talk about why we select functional datum features. And show an example, what would happen if I picked a non-functional datum feature? Sometimes my supplier is asking me to pick this as my datum feature. Why do I need to hold my datum features as those functional fit-ups? Now, this example is actually from Unit 6 of our online fundamentals program, which you can go to on our website or on the link below. Now, if you watched some of my other videos, you saw how I picked the datums for function. Remember, this is an alignment hole. This is an alignment slot that fit over two alignment pins. So it feels natural to select those as our datum features. A will be the main face that it mounts to. B will be this hole that we want to be perpendicular to that A. And C is going to be this slot that we want positioned in very tightly to A and B. And all of our features on this part should be referenced relative to that ABC reference frame because that's how the parts fit up. Now, one of the more critical relationships we needed, remember, was these two holes in the center. We need these two holes critically aligned to the two holes on the purple part. So how do we do that? We locate everything to our datum features. So we're going to position those relative to ABC. The outside edges of these two parts were important, too, to make sure they have good mismatches on each other. And so we have a profile tolerance all around of 10 tau. Now, this is what I want for function. This is how the part works. And I'm communicating that I need these two holes centered on the alignment hole and slot. Now, a lot of people say, yeah, but manufacturing would rather have it if the datums were this bottom corner, because we're going to manufacture it off of that. So I really want this to be the datum feature, and I want this to be the datum feature to help out manufacturing. Well, let me show you why that actually does the opposite. It hurts manufacturing, and it hurts your assembly by causing a stack-up issue. So let's just explore that for a second. Let's select this as our B, and let's select this as our C. So we're going to get rid of this and get rid of this. So now, to locate those two alignment features, you need a position tolerance. Position those relative to A, B, and C. Then we'll do the same thing on the slot. This has to be positioned relative to A, B, and C. This causes that unnecessary stack up and makes our assembly perform a little bit worse. Let me show you how you also it affects manufacturing. It makes it difficult to produce. Because before, we had an edge which didn't have a real tight tolerance, maybe a plus or minus 5 on it related to the edge. But now, by making it a datum feature, you've made it a critical feature now, because everything has to be located off this edge. So if you think about the relationship between this alignment hole to that bottom edge, it has to have a plus or minus half a thou, whereas before, you could have plus or minus five thou. So you've made it more difficult to manufacture because you made a non-functional surface, this bottom edge here, important just because you called it as a datum feature. Also, you've given less manufacturing flexibility but now manufacturing is sometimes forced into your datum reference frame you've selected because you thought it was easy to manufacture. So what I tell design engineers is try to stick to your guns. How does the part fit? How does it function? And select your datum's features best on that. And then you want to relate all your features to that. A lot of times manufacturing will hold on this bottom edge here, not a datum feature at all, and just cut your critical datum features and all your critical tolerances all at the same time. Then you have one setup for everything and you have the accuracy of the machine. So we don't want to set up to one edge right here then put the holes in, then get all ready on those and locate other things. We want to go from the inside out. That makes a lot more sense sometimes from going from the outside in. Also, inspection data can actually get a little bit morphed with this tolerancing scheme too, because we're going to control those holes relative to that datum reference frame ABC on the edges, but that's not really how the part functions. So when somebody says, hey, these two holes are up a little too high, how is that going to affect your performance? We don't really know. Did the other holes go with those holes? It becomes more difficult to correlate the data to say, if this shifts up, how does that affect my assembly? But if I pick my functional datum features and tell into everything related to that, when somebody says, hey, this hole is too much to the left or the right, that's exactly how it performs in the assembly. So your inspection data is more meaningful to you because you're getting data that collects the same way that it mounts in the assembly. So let's summarize the problems with the non-functional datum features. You get worse performing assemblies. Remember, we talked about stack up issues. If you don't select those functional features as your datum features, they're going to have to have a position tolerance. When they have a position tolerance on them, that causes one extra thing you have to deal with. The best part about a datum feature is you get to zero out on it. Something on your part gets to have no tolerance, and I want to pick it as the functional mate to the assembly. They're harder to manufacture and inspect because you've gone off some non functional datum features. You've made that non functional thing important when it really didn't need to be. If you just needed a relationship of those two holes to those alignment hole and slot, let's say that and get that middleman, the edges, out of there. We can give those a very loose profile tolerance of plus or minus five and make it not matter. So those non-functional datum features can make it unnecessarily important. Tight relationships are held when you don't really need it. And it gives you a little less flexibility in the manufacturing process. Maybe one supplier wants to go off these edges, but another supplier wants to go off this edge. 
well, it doesn't really matter to me. As long as you meet my functional need, I'd be happy. So don't force a manufacturing process by picking a non-functional DIGM feature. We talked about inspection data. It doesn't really correlate real well. When somebody says, hey, those hole and slot are too high, we don't really know how that works because it's really the center of the parts universe and we really want everything related to those instead. So your inspection data can be a little convoluted and harder to understand when you pick those non-functional features. Another thing that I've seen is people create more complicated tolerancing schemes when they pick non-functional datum features. They say, oh, the edges of the datum features, because that's what manufacturing wants, and we'll pick those as A, B, and C, we'll closely locate the hole and slot, then we'll get on those as a new datum reference frame to locate other things. And yeah, I guess that would work, but now you've got two datum reference frames to make it a lot more complicated. Why don't we just get on the datum features we cared about and control everything from that? Go from the inside out rather than the outside in. Now, people are going to say, well, that's not the way we manufacture it. That's okay. I'm not trying to tell you how to manufacture the part. I'm trying to tell you what's functionally important for it to work properly. And that's what we want is design functional drawings that convey how the part works and what's important for assembly. Now, I do want to offer another option. If manufacturing is really pushing for a datum reference frame, I need this as my datum reference frame because I want to know where, how my process is running or how things are looking relative to my manufacturing setup, we have selected manufacturing datums. And another option we could do there is pick end of the alphabet. We would pick maybe the Y datum, the Z datum, and maybe the X datum. Now, these are non-functional surfaces for design, but it's the way we tool it up or we manufacture it. So we're going to pick those at the end of the alphabet. Keep those away from my functional ABC. End of the alphabet is manufacturing datums. And yeah, we want to set up to X, Y, and Z and see how that hole was put in. All right, we'll put in a separate frame here and position that. Don't really care that much relative to the edge, so maybe 5 thou relative to X, Y, and Z. And we'll do that on our C feature as well. Make sure that's going to be positioned relative to the X, Y, and Z. And this way, you actually get best of both worlds. Functional intent is shown with the ABC. That's the front of the alphabet. That's where the important stuff lives. And then the end of the alphabet, X, Y, Z. Oh, yeah, that's how you manufacture. And maybe you want to do that for setup control or process control on your part. But really, our functional intent is met with ABC. And then you might find, ah, do we really need this XYZ in here? Maybe that could be brought down to a manufacturing drawing or a separate sheet that shows how this particular supplier makes it. But functional intent is always prime importance. Well, hopefully this video helped you. And if you want more examples like this, please go to our Geotile Fundamentals Online program and the link below.